We are recording. Oh, are we? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's still very important. The emergency exits, the emergency exits are not to the front. Right. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> to the rear, and to the side, and perhaps through your roof. It if, opens all the way, and I can fit through it. If we exit through the front, it will be an emergency. <laughs> Alright, we got another Hello. episode of I'm in the Car in the Making. Hey. I, I have a feeling it's going to be a good one. <laughs> well, it better be. Yeah, uh, and I have the privilege of having Marissa Teeter on the show. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, so, it's yeah, it's a wonderful sunny day in March. Mm-hmm. Um, Beautiful outside. It's really not. It's snowy <laughs> and really dark. It's disgusting. But we wanted to wear our sunglasses. We did. So we're wearing sunglasses. There we go. Yeah. So, um... Well, thanks for doing this. We were going to do it a, a while ago, but you, you changed gigs, and then the calendar reminder wasn't there, and then we're like, hey, I bet you didn't. We reached out, and you're like, what's It's not on my calendar. It doesn't happen in my life. Right? Right. That's a whole other topic. That's a whole other topic. Time management. <laughs> okay. uh, so well, maybe you could just give people a quick heads up in terms of where you've been and what you're up to these days. Sure. So I you know, I live in Guelph. I love Guelph. Woof, I... Guelph. Woof, Guelph. Um, I've been working with an amazing company called Skyline for the last almost 10 years of my life. Mm. Uh, Many of you probably know them. Shout out to Skyline. Um, And a few months ago, I was approached with an amazing opportunity to uh, switch gears and roles and work with Investors Group Canada. Um, Also, shout out to Investors Group Canada. Um, it uh, It was a terrifying opportunity because it was a huge leap and it was a big job. Um, and it was so exciting to be considered, you know, when someone taps you on the shoulder and thinks, yeah, hey, we think you'd be great for this. You kind of go, me? Um, so, uh, it was, it was a massive change in my life and I went from, you know, running a wealth management firm under the Skyline umbrella to, um, overseeing all of the kind of financial advisors across Ontario and our, our field leadership, as we like to call it at Investors Group, um, it's, it's a big gig and it's, yeah, it's something it's a, it's a big gig, gig. Um, and it's something that I was terrified to do which was to me probably a pretty good indication that I needed to do it so here I am 90 days into the new job um, uh, there's a lot more business travel involved which is something I'm not used to but starting to, to get used to sometimes uh, with two kids at home a night away in a hotel is quite the reward in itself let me tell you <laughs> Um, I have no idea what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> well, you need to find a job with business travel. No, no, trust me. <laughs> I found some travel. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure it's hotels in Guelph, too. You know? No, we're good. We're good. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just saying, I, I, I've, I've like, like the fact that you're just like, you know what? Getting away from the kids is kind of nice sometimes. <laughs> like, okay, I'm not alone in admitting no. to that. That's oh, good. no. I, yeah. I was terrified at first, but now I, I look forward to it. Yeah. And, you know, when they're older, I won't let them watch this video, but... <laughs> <laughs> you know, because they'll find out how I really feel. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been it's been crazy. I mean, the, the craziest thing about this new job is that um, Investors Group is an amazing organization, but they literally uh, kind of grow from within. Everybody's promoted from within, everything from within. Mm-hmm. So hiring externally is something they've never done, let alone someone at a senior vice president level. I'm the first person at that organization that was in my role that's been brought in from the outside, which was done on purpose, which I'm really excited about. They can kind of look at me like I've got all the answers because I'm from the outside. <laughs> I'm not sure that's true. Um, but what I will say is that it's kind of been a two-way learning experience. And one thing I've had to learn, regardless of the title on my business card or the role that I'm coming into, I really have to ask questions. You really have to be open to new things. You, you know, you have to um, kind of be open to people showing you things their way and then also trying to absorb it in your own way. I have not had to absorb this much new information, I think, since university, so it's painful. <laughs> it's so painful. Water for a um, fire hose? I'm like, what did I used to do? Cue cards, study notes, late nights at <laughs> the library. Different colored pens. How did I, highlighters, highlight, yeah. highlight, highlight, yeah. So, you know, it's it, the reality is that, you know, when you a uh, working mom in this role, absorbing new information is, is, is a challenge. Um, but they've been very patient with me. And for me, it's just been finding the time to, to do that reading and to take it all in and to take time and ask questions, uh, sit down with people and, and, you know, try to absorb as much as possible. Cool. So there's <laughs> yeah. a couple of things I'd love to touch on. Yeah, you go just, ahead. There's a whole bunch of topics. I just had a coffee. So no, it's you cool. ever need me to That's, stop. No, no, no. Yeah. Good, good, good. <laughs> But the first thing, well, first of all, I keep looking at myself in this video and I can't take myself seriously because <laughs> it looks like I have a giant head right now, but really I'm just wearing oh, you don't? my no, kid's you don't. sunglasses. Oh, yeah. I didn't have my kid's sunglasses with me, so. So I'm just wondering, do I have real sunglasses on? These were the ones in my car. Too bad I don't have an extra Okay, whatever. I'm just going to okay, go with okay, it. Okay, go with it. Everybody knows now my head didn't get giant. 
They're actually tiny sunglasses. Tiny sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> but you said something that I thought was really interesting around the opportunity kind of scared the crap out of you. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of an indication to you that it was probably something you needed to do. And I don't think everybody feels the same way about fear. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people are like, oh, yes, I true. don't know, I should even do <laughs> that. Too, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so what is it about something that scares you that makes you think? What's the, where's that mindset come from where you're like, you know what, I gotta dive into this because it's getting me a little bit out of my comfort zone. I think, you know, people who know me have heard me say this many a times, but I often believe that the, the right choice is often the tough choice. And I don't know where that comes from. I'm sure one of my parents would love to take credit for it. Um, but this, I've just kind of always felt that. And it's advice that I've passed on to people um, that I've worked with or, you know, friends or family. But, you know, when you're struggling with a decision, um, sometimes those feelings of excitement can often mimic those feelings of fear. Like, we, yeah. we know when you got those butterflies in your stomach, you're really excited about something. Well, sometimes when you're really nervous about something, it, 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 it kind of mimics that, but you kind of can't tell the two apart. So sometimes when you're looking at decisions and you feel that people just assume it's it's bad nerves as opposed to it's sheer excitement for what's ahead so that's I don't know that's kind of one of my life lessons that if it's if it seems too easy it's probably not probably not gonna work out or I don't know or it's not really the right thing it, you know if, if it's if it's a little more challenging and, and just knowing me in terms of what I needed I needed to be challenged and that was really important so that's cool and yeah I mean for me it's always been uh, a cue you know, if, if there's anxiety that I'm experiencing or nerves or something, it's typically a cue that I'm doing something that I should be doing. Like, yes, it's like this is pushing me. I'm growing right from this. Yes, um, and it's cool. So I just think it's really neat to get that mindset because, I, and I always kind of relay it back to. Um, I don't know. Have you ever seen that movie Man on Fire with Denzel Washington? Yes. And yes. He, so yes, he, and he's, so he's, a, he's coaching or mentoring uh, a young girl in that movie. He's a swimmer. Right. And every time the starter pistol fires, she winces. Right. And so he trains her over many, you know, montages mm -hmm. <laughs> that the gunfire is unleashing her like a horse out of a out of a starting gate. Right. Yeah. And then she starts to crush it. Right. Because she doesn't flinch and then go. Right. And that is all about that mindset to start everything off. So it's, yeah. like, it's just really interesting that you brought that up. And so then the next thing though you bring up is this okay? So not only was it this huge transition to go from Guelph to, you know, you're working at a senior leadership level within Investors Group Canada, mm -hmm. um, but you're, you're doing so, you know, parachuting yourself into an organization that's never hired from outside. Yeah. So like, you, you talked about the idea of listening and absorbing, but like, when or how do you start to instill some of the vision that you have? What do you do to create know trust with the troops like, how do you navigate that whole transition yeah so that's a valid point because I, I mean I was sought out because they felt I had a certain expertise in an area that was really interesting for them and so I kind of for lack of better words I'm hanging my hat on that I'm hanging on what I really know when I go in there and just this outside perspective at first in meetings I was hesitant throughout my hand and kind of question you know why do we why do we do it that way and why is this like this but as I started to do that I saw that people appreciated that because sometimes it was the response was well I don't, I don't know why we do it that way yeah. and and I've come to realize that people appreciate that outside perspective and it's not so much foreign it's it's welcomed by a lot of people um, so I think that um, yeah I think a lot of it was just me you know they told me why they they approached me and, and what I could bring to the table because I had questions too like why me why do you you know where do you see the fit I wanted to make sure I was going to be successful in this role sure yeah well that's and, a big change yeah, you know, somewhere you're rocking it and I was comfortable and I was happy and I was, you know, I, I loved what I did. Um, so just to know that I wanted to make sure that I could succeed, it was a massive life change for me to, to go through and for my family to go through um, and to leave an organization that I loved. So um, that's what I do now is when I go in there, I, you know, I love people and I think one of my strengths is people. So being able to interact with people and, and listen is, I'm on a, what they call a listening tour right now. So I'm just well, meeting with people and listening, which is great. Um, but I think for me, the area that they identified as my area of expertise, that's kind of what I'm focusing on. I'm going in and I'm, I'm trying to bring value in that way. And uh, and even as I'm in there now, there's other things that are of, of interest to me that I'm trying to, I'm trying to look for the quick wins. I'm trying to look where, you know, I can establish myself and see where that people can see that I have something to offer maybe, or I bring something to the table. But in the beginning, I was very nervous about that. Right. I didn't want to lift up my hand. I didn't want to say the wrong thing. I didn't. 
because I wanted to kind of take it all in. I think there's a little bit of that, you know, which is kind of normal at first. You want to see how things operate. Before lay in the land. Yeah, I kind of lay in the land, figure out the culture. Um, I was very different than the people sitting around that table. You know, a bunch of um, older gentlemen uh, that made make up my colleagues. Um, you know, um, not all of them, a lot of women as well too. But I was I was certainly an outsider, so I needed to make sure that. Um, you know, the first thing that came out of my mouth in the big meeting was the right thing. <laughs> you guys serve toaster strudel? <laughs> <laughs> When's our next break? Yeah. 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 So when you're on a, a listening tour, yep. um, have you found, and so that may, that maybe this is me asking a question that's essentially um, kind of portraying or, or trying to place on you some of the <laughs> things I've been experiencing, but I've found, you know, with coaching, uh, for example... Listening uh, for the for the true goal of listening is actually quite difficult, and that what I've experienced is a is a natural tendency. What seems to be a natural tendency in myself, and I've trained myself out of it. I'm still I still lapse every once in a while, but for the most part, for people to solve problems. Right. So people are presenting issues, or they have they're having uh, they have a problem they're trying to deal with, and to 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 keep listening and to coach through to help someone self discover and self solve. Is like a that is an effort. Yes, it's not a natural thing for what I've experienced. Right. So when you're on those listening tour, but you're also trying to make an impact and find your quick wins, how do you, how do you develop that balance, or how do you ride that balance of let me help you right now because I can crush this for you. Right. I'm just going to listen for the sake of listening because that's what I need to do right now. It's a tough balance. I also find you know going in there there's a little bit. I'm always worried that they're telling me what I want to hear. Right. So I'm going in and oh here comes the new SVP and she's. You know, interviewing me, I've been selected to speak with her, and you know, let me just tell her what I think. But what's remarkable is, is that people have been very honest, like shockingly honest in some <laughs> situations, where I'm like, you do know that no. Um, so I, I've appreciated that that people have been very honest because I think collectively as an organization, you know, not everybody's aware that investors groups are really kind of tearing themselves apart to build themselves back up right now. You know, a new CEO came in a couple uh, about a year and a half ago, and yeah. he's making the tough decisions to make the company more client centric and more client oriented, uh, more transparent, provide better value for our clients. And it's a lot of work. You want to talk about making the tough decisions. Um, it's a, and it, you know, there's been a lot of change. They, people say that there's been more change in the last 18 months than there has been in the last 18 years of that organization, which wow. is a massive statement. That's disruptive. Too. So, and me coming in is disruptive. I'm new, I'm change, I'm different. And so yeah, you're just like walking around. I'm change. Yeah, I am. Like, I might, you might as well. I am the poster child for change in that organization. <laughs> right. So white, female, young, new, outsider. Like you might as well just slap a diversity and inclusion slash new logo on my forehead. Um, change disruptor. It's, but you know, it, I, people have been remarkably honest, which I'm always surprised at and very forthcoming with information. And they do, they certainly do look at me like I, like I've got the answers in a lot of ways, right? So what are you, what are you going to bring to the table? And I think what I, again, when I go back to the reason why I'm here, which is kind of the outside perspective. Sometimes we, we forget, and even having come where I've come from, sometimes when you're in your organization for so long, you exist in a bubble in a lot of ways, and we don't realize it, right? So if you were to, you know, we were to kind of take you out of your role, put you into a different company, you'd have to kind of unwrap your, and unravel your kind of entering media thinking and, and, and the conversations and your language and all the way you, you kind of work. Sure. So it's the same thing for them. I mean, they've been so entrenched in investors group for so long that, um, they're happy to hear. I find I find people, or they seem happy. They could be again lying through their teeth. I don't know, <laughs> but they seem happy just to hear an outside perspective and to hear that there's hope and to right. hear that someone um, is, is came into this organization and left a job she loved because she saw that there's a huge opportunity to work for an organization that wants to reinvent itself and be relevant and and shake up an industry that needs a big shake up. Cool. And people, I think, can get behind that. Yeah, big time. Well, I mean. Hope, even if it's a good situation to become better or a bad situation to become good, is a really powerful thing for people. Sure. Yeah. yeah. They need something to rally behind amidst all the change. So, um, is there anything that you have in terms of a vision for what kind of impact you want to see there over the next year, two, three, five? Yeah, I, I think one of the things I've discovered having been on the inside now is that we're kind of our, I don't know how you look at it, worst, best kept secret. There's a lot of good things happening in this organization a lot of happy clients, but I find no one, um, you know, we did to, uh, consumer polls and, and no one really has an opinion about IG, oh. which is a really interesting, which is a great opportunity for a marketer. I would imagine that you think, Oh great. Here's Make an opportunity to, to create an opinion. And I think I would really love that is if we could start being more 
kind of mass market approach in our efforts. Uh, IG is not historically a big marketing organization. Um, people will essentially know IG as probably the person who sells IG in their community. So our right. people have essentially been our walking, talking billboards for years, good and bad. Because if you have someone who perhaps had a you know, bad reputation, that would work negatively against the brand. But I feel like we're in a time where we have a great opportunity to impact. There's tons of stuff going on in the financial industry right now, and people are looking for answers, and there's mixed messages everywhere. Oh, yeah, big time. So I think there's an opportunity there to create a positive brand, because I think if we can start getting out there to the masses and let people know the true IG story, what the company's really about, I mean, it's been around for almost 100 years. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a pretty amazing story now that I'm in there and I'm meeting everybody and seeing the people, and people who work there never leave. Like, it's remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's time that, you know, tell our story so that we start creating a lineup at our door as opposed to us knocking down people's doors, right? right. So from a client acquisition standpoint, from a talent acquisition standpoint, right. it'd be really great if people saw our brand and really knew our story and wanted to be a part of that. Cool. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of what I'm hoping happens. Yeah, that's a small project. Just tiny project. Next Friday, have that done? <laughs> yes, Wrapped up? Like, just like, you know, a few... <laughs> tens of millions of dollar budget I'll just whip out of my cracks my couch and <laughs> yeah, make it happen awesome. that's cool though I, and I think you uh, make a really cool point because you know when when there's no perception it can it's I think it's easier to make one than it is to change one sure yes so sure that's that's really cool sure yeah uh, I'm glad you think so because that's your area of expertise. Well, legit. Like, yeah. I mean, and we work with people that try to change them. Yeah. And that's difficult because you're essentially one of the biggest things that I have when it comes to marketing is kind of two things. One is um, everybody has a worldview, meaning people individually have belief systems that create their reality of how sure. the world works. And two, no one wants to be told that their worldview is wrong. It's like, it's sure. just, it doesn't 100%. work. 100%. No, you're right. So from a marketer's perspective, our job is to find the people with the worldview that matches the stuff that we do so that we can connect with them, help them love our stuff, and then make them our ambassadors so that they can help sh change and shape the worldviews of others because I can't tell you to right. change your mind. No. But if enough people that you're friends with say this is amazing, you might start to think, maybe, maybe I should go check yeah. it out. Yeah, well, and especially money. Like, money's such a funny topic. People... Don't, like our parents never really talked about it, and it's you know kind of taboo. Hey, Dad, how much money you make? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember my dad Shut going up. to the bank machine, making me turn around while he punched his pin, like I was some kind of criminal that was going to steal all his money. <laughs> um, it's just a funny conversation, and, and but if you know if people have really positive experiences and experience a lot of value from, from their financial advisors, so like they will they will tell people. You'll no. tell your friends because you you want to make sure your friends are are well taken care of. You want to make sure when you retire. That you have people around you who can afford to travel with you. Yeah. Can afford, you know, it's, it's gonna be a lonely retirement if you know, you know, no one is financially that's stable a, as you are. That's a cool point, right? So I think that, um, yeah, the, creating the walking, talking billboards amongst your followers really, really critical, and, and helping tell that story. And that's that's. I mean, I think in the beginning you rely on mass marketing to kind of get the story out, but then you hope your clients and your you create those followers that essentially will do that for you, and and that's even more valuable. Like you said, it's even more valuable coming from people that you trust as a, as a, as a referral source. So Big time. that's the, you know, that's five-year plan. But for now, we'll just focus on past marketing. That's cool. <laughs> so switch gears. Yes. Um, Senior Vice President of Financial Services Ontario. Mm -hmm. Mom of two kids, four and a half, two and a half. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, How do you Coffee. Make... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, meals on the go. Yeah. No, I am. Um, listen, it takes a village. I rely on a lot of people and I'm so blessed to have a husband that is incredibly supportive and, you know, picks up the slack wherever is needed. Um, you know, my in-laws, my parents, we have an amazing um, nanny who helps us out. And like, these are just people that without them, like there's a hundred percent no way I can do this job between the travel and being on the road and having to head to Toronto where my office is. And it just wouldn't happen. And it, my life is literally, and I'm sure you can relate to this, it's, you know, every minute of every day, you're kind of squeezing every last bit of juice out of that lemon, <laughs> and you find the time to multitask, and you, and you, like I said earlier, you know, if my calendar was deleted, I wouldn't know what to do, because everything is scheduled so specifically. Um, <laughs> I put reminders in there oh, that I call to make dentist appointments. You're and speaking call to, to my heart. Yes, see? So, and you know what, I, that allows me to make sure that I have plenty of time to spend time with my kids, it's plenty of time to work when I need to work, um, do fun stuff, you know, at least two to three times a year, 
sometimes, maybe once a year, do fun stuff. Sure. <laughs> um, but it take, I mean, it takes a village, and I, I would, I would be lying if I said I did it all by myself. Oh, that's cool. And I, yeah, I think there's a couple of things in there that are really important. Though one is, um, I don't know how to say this politely, but Just if you it. think you're busy and you don't have children, you're not busy. Please, you could say that. <laughs> People who, who don't have kids who complain to me, unless you have a lot of hobbies or something, I don't know. Well, then, you, then you're busy by choice. Oh my god! Which yeah. is wonderful. Yeah. And I'm a busy by choice person too. Yes. Like when I didn't have kids, yeah. I was when you busy. have to literally keep a small human alive, <laughs> 24 hours a day. Yeah, uh, and I'm not a structured person, but my calendar is probably more structured than the average bear. Um, and so when I hear you say things like I have calendar time to call the dentist, mm -hmm. like that's I mean that's yeah. but that leads me into something which I think is kind of beautiful. And as much as, so like, you know, I find that when we typically get team members oriented and trained, I mean, I, I live and die on my calendar, right? So there's sometimes a little bit of resistance around, you know, like, I, I, like my whole life. Is mm -hmm. it, you can just look at my calendar yeah. and you'll see no. yep. that tomorrow <laughs> I have two friends coming up to have dinner and yes. go to the hot tub to have a scotch. Like, yep. it's in my calendar. Maybe my wife is ovulating tomorrow. Maybe. <laughs> I didn't know you had we'll a wife. We'll edit that I part out. Had, I didn't know you had a wife, <laughs> no, I mean, too. like, your wife. Right? No, no, Gosh, I could use done. a wife, we're honestly. Done. We're done. <laughs> okay, It's okay. official. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, but what, what I found is interesting, though, is, and I've been asked this question, um, and specifically in some comments on videos about, uh, I was asking people in December, what, what kind of topics would you like me to do? Because mm -hmm. I have to do them just on my own. And one of them was like, uh, which was multitasking. Okay, yeah. I'm trying to get say, a book written. I talk to myself all the time in the car. <laughs> I should have a show. <laughs> right? <laughs> anyway, feel free. Okay. There will be flattery is the way. No, what? Imitation is, is the, the best form of flattery. There you go. So I, mean, I know what you're saying, yeah. Um, but they were like, how do you do it? Like, how do you run a business, uh, entrepreneur, growing, whatever? Uh, yes. Kids, three kids under three at the time. And how do you have time? And one of the things uh, that I thought was really fascinating is time is this really interesting thing because a lot of people think there isn't enough right a lot of people don't have any but you can make time you Touché. know and it's a that weird deep. it's a weird thing <laughs> yeah there's only true. so much time in a day but you can make time and i find that when things get important and this is why i found kind of neat with having kids and running a business is that it's focused in my time yes and it's made me really reflect and prioritize what's important to me Yes. And then make the time yep. to have the time to do those things. 100%. And I just think, you know, to hear you, what you're saying too, right? Like, you know, it takes a village and you got to find your priorities. So when it comes to managing your time outside your calendar, how do you decide what to fill your calendar with? Uh, well, kids always come first. So I, you know. I have to take these glasses off. I can't okay, take myself fine. serious. I've been looking at myself. Just, I can't. Stop looking at yourself. Well, I'm like making sure the frame's good. I don't have to adjust okay. anything, and I'm just like I look like Elton John. I'm keeping mine on because I, <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. You're cool. It's actually pretty fit. bright outside. The snow is very bright. Um, I well, kids always come first. So you know, if you look at my calendar, if there's something happening, but luckily my kids are still kind of small. Like they're kind of tiny. So extracurriculars. Well, extracurriculars are still, are still kind of minimal. And if I have them in a lot, that's because I'm one of those crazy moms that thinks my kid can do gymnastics at four years old. Yeah. Um, not happening. Dude, yeah, I play soccer at two and a half. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, I do it, but it's it's more painful than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, That's but I, I think it comes down to that. Um, I put a lot of emphasis on my health. I, I'm someone who, I'm only as good as how good I feel. Uh, did I say that probably? Yeah, I'm only as good, so. as, how, as good as I feel. And, you know, the reality is, is that if I feel run down if I'm exhausted the reality the quality of my work's not going to be good I'm not going to be a good mom uh, so I put a lot of emphasis on that so I, I do exercise I may put time on my calendar to exercise I you know I, I see health practitioners like chiropractors and massage and all those things especially because sitting at a desk is the number one killer of people there's it's not a real stat but I just made it sitting is the new sitting, smoking sitting is the new smoking I'm not even joking that's a thing I'm telling you it's yeah. you know sitting all day either if I'm in a car or if I'm at a desk it's horrible for you so I, t I try to take care of myself, so I definitely make time to, to do that. Um, and the rest is just work and, and life and, and whatever happens. So it I, I have to feel good and I have to make sure my kids are taken care of because otherwise my head is not in my work. Yeah. So, um, I've, and I figured that out. It took me a long time to figure that out, but here we are. Yeah, and uh, and I, it's working. I'm figuring it out. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. So then, um, 
well, just quickly then, not yes. to say it's going to be a quick answer by any stretch, but how did you figure it out? Like, do you take time to reflect on what you should do? Do you have a thing in your calendar that says, okay, reevaluate priorities, or like, I don't know, what, how do you make, how do you fill your calendar? Like, and I, I'm asking right now because I'm just yes. doing it for me, because I fill my calendar very intentionally, but I'm not sure if a lot of people understand the value of doing that, <laughs> or if you share that. Well, I, so there's a couple of things. I, I, just to that point, it makes me laugh because we, I, I'm working with an, uh, with an assistant now at Investors Group. I've never had an assistant before, and she's sort of populating my calendar for me, and I was having a heart attack. Because <laughs> I was like, no, I have no time. That she goes, but it's open. I said, but that's not that's my exercise time, or that's my go pick up my kid from school time. Or, so it's funny because I've take back, taken back control of my calendar because I've realized that my calendar is like my Bible. I need that. I, I need it to be perfect. And I, I know where things fit and I know where things make sense. So that was kind of a learning experience for me early on in this new job. I've never had someone populate my calendar before. And in fact, one time she did it, you know, the same day, same day. So I'm driving home from a meeting, I get a phone call like, where are you? I'm thinking, what? what? You're supposed to be in a meeting. I didn't know I was supposed to be in a meeting. Well, someone's put in your calendar. Well, when I leave that morning, I know my calendar inside and out. In fact, you know, that week I have a pretty idea of what's happening. So if you want to throw something in at 9 a.m. for 2 p.m., I'm sorry. It's not happening. Try tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was an interesting learning. In terms of, no, I don't put, um, I, I, I guess it's really about um, uh, routine. So for me, certain things have to be routine. I don't have kind of intentional kind of cues or things that I put in there. I color code the crap out of my calendar. So if anyone looked at my calendar, they would think I just... It was very artistic, maybe, or had <laughs> like some rainbows. sort of problem. Yeah, but I color code everything because it helps me see, you know, how much of it, you know, green stuff is personal. So it helps me see how much is green. Red stuff is really, really important. Work stuff, you know, I kind of color code it all to make sure that I know that there's a good balance. And, you know, I was, I was at a conference last week, Lay said that balance just is not, does not exist. That's true. I have no balance in my life because that would mean things are balanced 50 50 that are perfectly weighted. Right. So my life is not perfectly weighted, but the word she used was harmony. And I really liked that. Because it's not bad. It's not 50 50. There's no equal weighting. It just works. Yeah. Um, that's cool. So that I really, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hanging my hat on that one now. I'm kind of taking that one. Harmony. That's try to, what I try to have. So um, routine. I guess getting back to the point of it's, it's routine. There's certain things that are in my schedule always. Yeah. Like these and staples. I, and I work the rest around it. Cool. That are just yeah critical. Well, and that's it's kind of like the, that rock video. Have you ever seen that? Um, I think it's Covey. Or Carney, I don't know, but it's a classic uh, video of a like Dwayne Rock Johnson. No, it's no. Oh, it's a guy on stage. I would have seen that. It's a guy on stage. If you do, if you Googled <coughs> or YouTube searched um, "Priority Rocks on Stage," okay, you'd see it. I think it's I don't know. I'm bastardizing. It. I think it's Dale Carnegie, um, and he and he has this executive on stage, and she has to put these big rocks, these little rocks, and these mm. small rocks into a canister. Yeah. Big rocks and first. The big rocks first. Yeah. So, and that's how the calendar is yeah. kind of situated. So, that's cool. so a couple yes. minutes left. Okay. Um, you got something coming up, an event? Tickets just <gasps> went on do. sale. You yes. want to give us a quick little heads up what's that about? Yes. The uh, YMCA, YWCA's 23rd Annual Women of Distinction so cool. Awards is happening uh, May 3rd, 2018 at the River Run. Um, I've been involved with this event for the last three years. Really lucky to be a part of it this year. Um, you know, like they asked me if I'd be the honorary chair, uh, which is just a really fancy way of saying, hey, do you want to organize this event in your spare time? <laughs> and of course, because anybody who knows I'd me know honored. I can't say no, I'm like, sure, I'd be honored. Um, but I'm really happy I did it. I work with a remarkable group of women to, to pull this off. And this year's theme is It Takes a Village because um, I just, like I said, I don't think uh, the success of these women happens in a bubble. And I think these honorees, uh, there's 20 women that are recognized. I think they would agree that they they really have a village of people around them that have helped them get to where they are today. And women have also have this remarkable ability, ability to build up a village. So we're really recognizing these women. We're recognizing their village. And uh, we've got some special guests coming this year. We've got CTV's uh, uh, Melissa Grello from The Social. Uh, coming as our MC, we also have uh, Sophie Grégoire Trudeau, our first lady, well said. coming. Thank you. Um, I also am bilingual. If you want to do any French yeah, videos, yeah. Um, so you can talk. I'll just sit here and <laughs> just, listen. Just smile. Yeah. Uh, so, I really, we want the event to be inclusive. We want it to be accessible. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, one in five Y memberships is subsidized. Cool. So this year, our goal of the event is to make one in five tickets subsidized. So when you go on the website to buy tickets, which is 
is guelphy.org slash W-O-D. Um, That's worth uh, repeating. What is the website? guelphy.org slash W-O-D. Thank you. Um, that's where you can get tickets. Tickets are $70 each, or you can subsidize a ticket for somebody at a lower cost. Um, it's going to be a great event. So, yeah, awesome. Yeah. You guys will be there. You guys are one of our media sponsors. So. Yeah, we're Thank always you. There. We're there. I know you are. You're everywhere. Five, six years. You're everywhere. That's what we like to hear. Yeah. No, you is, are that everywhere. Is one of the goals. I try to get away from you, but you are <laughs> everywhere. And here you are. Yes, here I am. Um, great. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for doing this. Thank you. Quick one. Last one. Yes. Ideas for every I'm in a car. If you had to go back to tell yourself something at the beginning of your career and this whole you know, craziness that you've embarked on that you wish you knew then that you know now, what would be? Who cares what people think? They don't care about you as much as you think they do. Cool. That's probably what it would be. Awesome. Yeah. It reminds me of something where, I can't remember where it was, doesn't matter, but uh, it was this idea that we're all worried about what other people think about how we look or what we do. Mm-hmm. But if we're all thinking that, then no one's paying attention to anybody but themselves. Right, right. And <laughs> Which it's, is probably more Well, accurate. yeah, you're so, if you're so worried about what people think, you're also hyper-focused on yourself. And I would say in this day and age with everything that's going on, um, I would also tell myself that you got there, uh, not because you're a woman, but because you're actually good at what you do. That's awesome. me talking to the chip on my shoulder. Yeah, cool. But, Yeah. Well, it sounds like we have another episode then to talk about this chip on your shoulder. The chip on your Yeah. You like, featuring... I'll just be out of the frame a little bit and you can just talk to the chip. We'll edit in a shoulder. little chip, a little, little character named chip. We'll put chip. the sunglasses on the, <laughs> yeah. the shoulder. Well, thank you for doing this. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much.